the disco dancing foreign minister of the once mighty German Republic was in Saudi Arabia lecturing the kings and princes who rule that kingdom that they must not allow unconditional entry into the Arab League of the Arab Republic of Syria. Now, I don't know what this teenage scribbler knows about the Middle East, but I'm pretty sure it's precious little. What I'm more puzzled about is why on earth she thought it was any of her business to lecture Arab countries about who should be a member of the Arab League. I'm glad to say she got short shrift from the increasingly independent leadership in Saudi Arabia. But Anna Baerbock lies over the ocean again. And I know a man who wrote a wonderful song about that. You can hear it and we'll speak to him later. Dieter Dem, Dr. Dieter Dem, who is the presenter of Motes of Deutsch, which begins on Sunday at 5 p.m. Berlin time. If you can speak German even at schoolboy or schoolgirl level, I advise you to tune in at least for the first opening of Motes of Deutsch at 5 p.m. That's 4 p.m. London time, 5 p.m. Berlin time on Sunday. I promise you it's going to be worth watching. And even if you can't speak German, won't it be good to see a man who quite obviously is my brother from another mother. Now, the situation in Pakistan has become beyond critical. Having been arrested by a paramilitary mass whilst in court giving his biometric details and taken off to illegal incarceration in the headquarters of Pakistan's intelligence service, the judge in the High Court, the chief judge in the High Court, ordered his production in court, habeas corpus. Took them an hour and a half to bring him to the court, just about four minutes drive away, but they eventually produced him and the judge declared that his arrest had been entirely illegal and set him free. There were no consequences for the people who ordered, never mind the people who carried out, a brutal, brutish, illegal arrest on a man who is the rightful prime minister of their country. And if there were elections, as there have to be soon, then the man who will sweep the boards, and therein lies the problem. They haven't given up, you know. They are determined to get their hands on Imran Khan. They will not allow him to be effectively under house arrest. And knowing Pakistan as I do, I know the reasons for that. Because if he's inside his house, they or someone on their behalf cannot kill him. As I've said in social media, post after post, they in a way cannot afford to allow Imran Khan to live because if he lives, he will win a majority such as that has never been seen in Pakistan elections before. Never mind a two-thirds majority, never mind a three-quarters majority. Imran Khan has become emblematic in Pakistan for the people's desire to breathe, to stand up as free men and women to make their way in the world other than as a satrap of the United States of America. I have outlined so many times I need not detain you now with the chapter and verse. But the Americans ordered the overthrow of Imran Khan for the same reason they have ordered the overthrow uh, of uh, the president of Turkey, Erdogan. They cannot accept any Islamic leader who is independent of them. The attempted coup in Turkey has for the moment been thwarted. President Erdogan got a staggering 49.5% of the poll in the first ballot. 
and will surely win a comprehensive victory in the second. They have failed again in their regime change operation. But in Pakistan, it's not just Imran Khan who is facing imminent arrest again. The number of PTI, that's his party, workers, leaders, members of the various parliaments, regional, provincial, even national, members of the Senate who have been dragged from their homes in the middle of the night, many of them now absolutely out of contact with their lawyers and their families, being effectively disappeared, has reached the number of thousands. I saw one figure of 7,000 people under arrest behind bars with no legal basis, never produced in court, only because they are supporters of the most overwhelmingly popular figure in Pakistani politics in my lifetime. Women are being particularly singled out in a conservative and Islamic society. The sight of women, old women and young women, being physically manhandled by male police officers, taken into custody and nothing known of their whereabouts or their well-being is causing complete outrage that has reached dangerous proportions throughout Pakistan. And many, like Imran Khan, are being arrested, then released, then re-arrested. This situation has become intolerable to the vast majority of the people of Pakistan. I'm perfectly sure of that. For why otherwise would the imported government the front page of the Police Gazette that now seek to pass muster as the cabinet of Pakistan would not be doing everything possible to close down the flow of information in and out of Pakistan. Journalists like women are being singled out for torture, disappearance and in at least one case already cold-blooded murder, that one in Kenya. But there are others who have been disappeared and who may very well be dead. And one, at least, uh, Mr. Imran Riaz Khan, no relation, I think, who has credibly, reportedly been seriously, grievously tortured in the custody of these paragons of law and order, the once famed for stability. Pakistan Armed Forces and their terrible twin, the ISI, the Internal Security Apparatus in Pakistan. Journalists, women, party workers, MNAs, members of the Senate, members of the provincial assemblies. And now, perhaps this evening, again, the leader, the rightful Prime Minister Imran Khan. Pray for the life of Imran Khan. Pray for the release of Imran Khan. If this situation becomes literally uncontrollable, then tens, tens, scores of millions of people will be furiously teeming around the streets of Pakistan's cities, towns and villages. A country, I remind you, in possession of nuclear weapons. Another American disastrous regime change operation gone very badly wrong. And for the people of Pakistan, I have this message. If you want your country to be a dignified country, and I know that you do, if you want to take your place under the sunshine as dignified men and women, as I know that you do, you must defend with all of your strength the leader Imran Khan. You must ensure that those who seek to murder him are not able to do so. Because if he disappears into their maw, then no one, at least no one on earth, will be able to guarantee his safety. Ironic, as I say, because the orders for all of this 
were given by another country which has now been exposed as a banana republic, I refer to the United States of America. Every one of us knew there was a terrible smell about the whole Russia Gate hoax. We now know that both Australia and Britain were deeply involved in it. Indeed, the first shots were fired in a bar in London by a Mr. Papadopoulos, then a young foreign policy aide to the insurgent presidential campaign of Donald Trump. Either he said, or it was lied about that he said, that the Russians have dirt on Hillary Clinton. Even on the testimony of the people to whom he allegedly said that, no mention at all was made of any connection between Trump and Hillary Clinton. No mention, of course, of what dirt that was and how dirty it would turn out to be. No mention of a hack was made. No mention of contact between Trump and Russian officials was ever made by Papadopoulos, even on the account of his interlocutors who were seeking to entrap him. We know all of this and much, much more because the Durham report has finally reported that Russiagate was a hoax. In fact, it was more than a hoax. It was high treason. It was a conspiracy against the Republic. It was a conspiracy against democracy. It was a conspiracy against the people of the United States, its constitution, and all of its liberties. So much, so what? It's not my business what happens in the United States. Neither is it the business of most of you watching this now. But it is the business of the peoples of the world. If that Russia gate hoax made absolutely unavoidable, inevitable, inexorable, the epic existential confrontation that now exists between the United States and Russia over the bodies of the people of Ukraine. And it surely did. It means that all of those media personalities, all of those American politicians like Adam Schiff, who daily appeared in front of the compliant television stations and cameras to say that he knew, that he had seen the proof and that Donald Trump might very well end up being executed for treason, for traitorous collaboration with Vladimir Putin and the government of Russia. It was all a lie, as we now know, stamped official. The FBI was up to its neck in what the Durham report describes as a baseless, ponder that word, baseless, without basis, without any truth at all. The FBI and the CIA embarked upon the destruction of the presidency of Donald Trump, whose unexpected victory, unexpected except by me and by those of you who were listening to me back in 2016, whose unexpected victory destroyed the hopes of business as usual in the corrupt nexus that is the Democratic Party, the military industrial complex, and the vast security apparatus in the United States. Hillary Clinton shrieked at Donna Brazil in writing, in email, if this effing B, quite a lady is Hillary Clinton, if this effing B gets in, we will all be hanging with a noose around our neck. That's what Clinton said. That's the state of panic which existed as it became more and more obvious that the complacent entitlement of the Clinton campaign with their baskets of deplorables 
forgetting that even deplorables have got votes. And those deplorables' votes count for exactly the same as the university-educated reader of the New York Times. Trump's burgeoning voting base became awesomely obvious to the pussy hats and liberals in the Hillary Clinton army. And that army was doomed and damned. And once Trump got in, they realized he might actually drain the swamp. He might actually, metaphorically, one hopes, put a noose around the neck of the criminal political class of the Obamas, the Clintons, the Bidens, the crime family known as the Democratic Party of the United States. He might begin to expose and root them out. And so they literally invented the Russia Gate hoax. This is not me saying this. This is the Durham report commissioned by A.G. Barr all these years ago. Now, it has finally reported, and it is damning and devastating, particularly for the FBI. And so we are asking this evening in our poll, should the FBI, infamous from the days of J. Edgar Hoover himself, herself, itself, whatever pronoun he might have now adopted where he's still with us. Should the FBI be disbanded? You can vote on my Twitter feed, on YouTube, on my Telegram channel, t.me forward slash George Galloway, or on the YouTube community poll. 16,000 of you have already voted, and I haven't finished announcing it yet.